Welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. Today we're going against the grain once more, and I'd like us to focus a bit on a future hotspot trying to show itself out in the Caribbean Sea. Not a whole lot has changed elsewhere in our AOR, so this gives us some time to dig into the short-term future a bit more. I'll take you through the breadcrumbs I've been noticing step by step and hopefully make sense of the whole thing by the time we close out this segment. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. Today, I really want to hash out exactly what information that's been up and coming, and I want to communicate that to you immediately, so let's waste no time. Our two areas of focus are going to be the Eastern Atlantic, our infamous main development region, and what some of the models are suggesting could happen over the Western Caribbean as we get into the very early days of October. So as of 12Z this morning, despite the amount of continuity that most of our operational models have built up over the last three to five days, what could possibly either be future Ophelia or Philippe has actually started to trend a bit more to the west which was not anticipated by about 90% of our model platforms except for the GFS but the GFS has been very funky over the last few days in its depiction of that cyclone as it works its way off of Africa and where it could possibly either develop or transition but as you go through time this is our 12Z icon model you can see our disturbance comes off of Africa and develops into a low grade maybe even mid grade tropical depression and at this point in the run all of our models to include the icon the CMC and the euro were projecting it to immediately follow a pattern very reminiscent of what Nigel's doing in the Atlantic right now. If you carry this through time to the very tail end of the run, notice that there is a westward path and it stays on that current course as it approaches our Lesser Antilles. The reason I bring this up is we are at the 12Z model run, so we have new analysis data being plugged into our deterministic models, and apparently with what we've seen with the 12Z models do today, something is changing in our upper air pattern across the atmosphere in a large scale to suggest a lot of the model platforms hiking it a little further to the West. We're waiting for the European model to populate. It always comes in mid to late afternoon, so I'll definitely update you guys once I see more information with the Euro. The Canadian model and especially the GFS are very aggressive in this westward track, and there's a large amount of discontinuity as to whether or not it will affect the Lesser Antilles, become a Caribbean system, or continue to try to push out into open waters of the Central Atlantic. What's also interesting of note here is the icon is now picking up on the presence of a secondary cyclone back behind our current disturbance highlighted by National Hurricane Center. So perhaps we can't let our guard down just as of yet. There could be one or two more potential entities trying to come off of the African coast before we close out September and the peak of hurricane season for that matter. I know the 12Z GFS is likely to make a lot of waves on social media today, so let me get that out there in the open right now. As we go through time, once again, the GFS wants to carry our system to the west across the main development region of the central and eastern Atlantic, develop it into a low-grade hurricane moving through the Antilles and well into the Caribbean before deepening it down into a major hurricane at that, just to the south of the Dominican Republic in Haiti. And if you look at what the GFS wants to do, there's another low pressure center forming off the Florida coastline, very reminiscent of what's happening right now and what's forecast to develop as we go into this weekend. Sometime next weekend, the GFS wants to bring back a very similar system, which will create a weakness in that high pressure that's situated over the mid-Atlantic northeastern states, that big old 1030 high parked right up over here in the West Atlantic. And what that'll do is it'll allow our storm to move to the north ever so slightly, moving through Cuba and become a threat for the Bahamas, maybe even the peninsula of Florida, depending on if and when this low pressure can reshake itself out, like we're seeing on our models as of right now in the next few days. Not incredibly overly concerned with this. This is only one model run. We've seen trends going back and forth, especially with the GFS. The only reason I'm bringing this to everyone's attention is because other models are starting to come on board with it moving a little further to the west than what we were indicated or what we were alluded to over the last three to five days, end of last week and through the weekend. So something to definitely keep an eye on. The margin of error has once again increased. The inconsistencies that the GFS were showing are now across the board once again, so I'm very interested to see if this becomes a trend over the next few days, or if we can throw this out as early as tonight, if not very early tomorrow morning. Alright, now as we shift gears, we're all very familiar with this product. This is CPC's Global Tropics Hazards Outlook, and if you remember a few videos ago, and a few other weather enthusiasts and meteorologists alike have mentioned that our source regions are going to be shifting. The focus becomes a little bit more closer to home in the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean, while we still could see the occasional wave begin to make shape over the central and eastern Atlantic. The reason I bring this up is that's one of the primary areas I want to focus on. I'm starting to see things almost like a mirror image of what we saw as precursors before Idalia formed up in our western Caribbean. This is Climate Prediction Center's MJO Tropical Composite. I know I'm reading the label up at the top, but essentially what that means is we have our Madden-Julian Oscillation, which is essentially the oscillation between downward vertical motion or subsidence in our upper atmosphere and upward vertical motion or instability in our 
atmosphere. And as we transition towards the extreme back end of September, the very last few days of September and get into October, that's when we begin to see the MGO reposition itself over a favorable environment, i.e. the Central and Western Caribbean and parts of the Gulf of Mexico. You can see this once again on a very similar chart. This is the Euro's forecasted MJO prediction over the next few weeks. As we get through October, you can see a lot of the Atlantic AOR, particularly the Central and Western Caribbean, it might be a little hard for you guys to see, really comes under a window of favorable environment from about October 4th all the way through to almost the tail end of October, closer to Halloween time. We see that upward vertical motion taking shape, at least in terms of our oscillating pattern. Now, we have CPC's prediction of 20 plus percent chance of tropical cyclone development out in the Western Caribbean. We also see that the MJO is going to attempt to reposition itself in almost a very similar fashion to when Adalia kicked out of our Central American gyre. And some of the upper level models now to include the GFS, the Euro, and the CMC are showing us a very broad area of anticyclonic circulation and difluence at the very top portion of the atmosphere between 300 and 200 millibars. You can see this on the very tail end of the Euro. Once we finally get our deep trough to advect out of the southeast and out of the Gulf of Mexico for that matter, the primary feature responsible for developing that low off the Florida coastline, once that begins to move and clear itself out, take a look at what makes way in its place. We have this large anticyclonic curvature here in the model and in the streamlines right over top the Caribbean, repositioning itself, which is going to not only take away the wind shear that's in place right now, it's also going to help advect a little bit more Central American moisture out of the Eastern Pacific into the Caribbean, like we saw with Adalia, but it's also going to help lower pressures down at the surface and allow whatever moisture and instability in the low levels of the atmosphere to quickly ascend upwards, creating that upward vertical motion or that chimney effect to help thunderstorms start to more organize and maybe even consolidate into a tropical cyclone. Real briefly, you can see as that trough begins to move to the north and weaken, we get that anti-cyclone over the Caribbean and all that shear pretty much goes away. So we start to see a much more favorable environment for tropical development as we go towards the very end of September. This is 12 Zulu on September 28th. And you can see that anti-cyclone, that high ridge is in place over the Central and Western Caribbean. Now we're going to go right into the GEPs, the Canadian ensembles, because the Canadian ensembles were throwing Idalia in our face for almost nine to 10 days before she finally developed and became more relevant to all of our other operational models and ensembles. And for the last several days now, about four to five, maybe even six days out, it was once more wishy-washy showing very weak agreement for something to develop. But now we're back under the same mechanisms and the same consistency I saw with Adalia before she popped up where the model really wants to develop something out there in the Caribbean. There it is as early as September 26th into the 27th, we start to see that lowering pressure trend. And then there you go. The Canadian ensembles really come together and form up what could be a hurricane moving into the Jamaica and Cuban Island area before advecting northward into maybe even the southern peninsula of Florida. This has been the trend for the last few days. If I go back to 12 Zulu yesterday, you can see it right there. If I go back to 0Z earlier that day, you can see it once again, two areas of ensemble agreement. If I go back to 12Z on Sunday, you can see again, more ensemble agreement, albeit just a little bit weaker because it's further back in time. So something worth watching. We see the MGO beginning to reposition itself in terms of where the upward vertical motion will be at its peak. The Canadian models are really developing good run-to-run -run consistency in the ensemble agreement that something could take shape once these parameters really fully align. And the GFS as well as the Euro ensembles are now starting to come together in agreement that the Western Caribbean could be a future hotspot to watch out for for cyclonic development. As you go towards the back end of the 12Z GFS as of today, you can see that lowering pressure about 180 hours out before more models come into agreement that we could see something in the form of a hurricane form up and head right towards the southern Florida coastline and move into the Bahamas after that. This model is not fully populated in, but this has also been fairly consistent on the GFS as well, albeit the deterministic GFS has been kind of off the chain in terms of its depiction of the big picture weather pattern. I'll also bring you into the 0Z Euro ensembles. I'm extremely curious to see if we start to see more agreement as the Euro has been translating over the last few days, albeit very weak agreement out in the Western Caribbean. But as we get into that time zone that both the Canadian and the GFS are highlighting, once the Euro can finally make its way into that aforementioned time, we're starting to see ensemble agreement pick up momentum slowly but surely. As you get to the back end of the run, there goes future either Philippe or Ophelia, depending on what that subtropical cyclone does off of our coastline. But at the very back end, notice we have the same lowering pressures 
right there near the Yucatan Peninsula over the central and western, especially Caribbean, and even the Bay of Campeche, and they start to wander in that same general direction. So the Euro is the weakest and the least aggressive in terms of development out there in our new potential source region, but we're slowly but surely starting to see some overlap in different model platforms. I would imagine that once the Icon can catch up as well and we start to get a bit more runs out to that point in time with that mid-range model, we could see something indicated in that deterministic plot as well. So folks, kind of a general overview of what one particular area I'm really investigating looks like right now, as well as what could possibly happen with our African wave. Discontinuity as of 12Z today, especially after breaking the good run-to-run -run consistency a lot of our models have had through the weekend and into yesterday, so that definitely bears watching. We could see a whole new scenario pan out on the table. No cause for alarm as of right now. This is only one model run, so we're waiting to see if there are some trends in this depiction, or if it completely washes out by the time we get into 0Z tonight. But all in all, the tropics are not done yet, even though we are slowly descending down into the lesser parts of hurricane season before that light at the end of the tunnel can reach us and we exit it all together. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. This is going to wrap up Weather Center for today. Let's go ahead and get into our outro. And that'll do it, folks, for this latest segment of Weather Center. Thanks, everyone, for joining me on this lovely Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for our next scheduled update. The tropics are trying to settle down a little bit. We're now in the downward descent away from the peak of the season, but there's still lots of wiggle room for a potential cyclone to spin up at a moment's notice. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I would absolutely appreciate if you did so now, and please share this video for others who have yet to discover the page. I continue to do what I do for you all, and I sincerely mean that. Can't tell you how much I enjoy connecting with every single one of you, whether it be in the comments, during my live streams, or just on a day-to-day -day basis with those of you who have questions, comments, or concerns elsewhere on social media. We'll meet again soon, guys. For now, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.